Hey guys, Megan here from Growing Up Herbal. Welcome back to another one of my weekly vlog videos. So it is Monday and it is unseasonably warm for an early November day. It feels like it to me, at least as far as I can remember, because it's been so cold and this last weekend um, and the beginning of this week is supposed to be really nice and warm. It seriously feels like a summer day outside today. So this morning I got up, I had, um, I got my cup of coffee ready and my dog Rosie and I went for a walk around our property. That's been um, something that I've been doing this, uh, the past couple days because it has been so nice. Um, and then I guess I was outside and the weather was just so warm. The boys were inside working on a little, um, like Dean gave them a little job from the shop that they're working on and they're earning money. The two younger boys are gonna get $30 each to spend on something and the two bigger boys are working um, to buy a Nintendo Switch. So it's a big job and it's definitely doable. They each have um, like an age appropriate kind of thing that they're doing. They're each gonna get paid really well and they're gonna get something fun from that that they have been wanting for a while. Um, so anyway, while they were inside working on that, I thought it's so nice outside, I'm just gonna go out and kinda clean up around the yard. I burned a ton of boxes that we had the other day. Um, I have saved a ton of cardboard for our garden project, which I think I've showed you guys a little bit. Not sure, we haven't started it yet, but when, when we do start it, I'll show you. Um, more what I'm talking about, but I needed a bunch of cardboard to kind of smother the, the grass. So I have saved a bunch of cardboard from our Amazon boxes, but there were a bunch of like little ones that I just needed to get rid of because they weren't going to be useful or a bunch of cardboard that had a bunch of coloring in it that I didn't want to put back there. So anyway, I cleaned all that up. I straightened up our patio area. Um, I actually moved some big landscaping rocks on the mulch that goes all around the patio like where I wanted some rocks some landscaping rocks and we'll put plants around those next year um, I'm trying to think what else I did today I straightened up the front porch anyway it was just super nice outside um, and I feel like I got a good bit of stuff done there I also painted some more trim in our garage um, Dean has it all laid out I painted a bunch of trim because tonight I am going to Aldi's to do one of my two-week shopping hauls and I'm leaving him home with the kids. They don't have piano tonight. They normally do on Monday nights, but um, their piano teacher is gonna be out of town. So Dean's got the kids here and one of their cousins is coming over to play with them. Um, and so while the kids are playing, he is going to put trim up. So I needed to get it painted this morning so it'll be dry by this evening and he can put it up. Um, we have a bunch of areas that just need some trim work still done. Um, Anyway, so I have had a productive morning. The boys got finished with all of their stuff. While they were working, they listened to a couple chapters of some books that we are reading for our Native American studies for this month in November, which I talked about our winter schedule in last week's vlog. So if you missed that, you can go back to last week's vlog and kind of um, hear a little bit more about how we're like I guess our schedule for winter break we're not really like homeschooling but we're always sort of learning stuff so anyway you can look at that last video and see what our winter schedule routine kind of thing is kind of going to be like um so they did that after lunch we'll probably watch like a little Netflix show um as a part of our Native American stuff and um, so anyway, I got this Amazon box in the mail and I wanted to show you what I got because I had ordered some things for our Native American studies in November. Um, we have some online lessons that we're doing that I found um, that seemed like really great way to study Native American heritage and history. But because we tend to do like Charlotte Mason style homeschooling, we um, always have like a handicraft that we're working on and I thought it would be fun for the boys and I to make dream catchers to go over their beds together. So I ordered some stuff for the dream catchers and it came in the mail, so I wanted to show you. So first of all, a lot of times when you make dream catchers, you order these like rings online, but the traditional Native Americans would probably have used like um, a really flexible, piece of a branch, I guess, off of a tree or like a grass reed. And we actually have some grass reeds here at our house. So I'm gonna go cut some of those. We'll form our own rings and I'm trying to keep them as, as authentic as possible. Um, obviously, it's probably not going to be 
totally authentic, but as authentic as we can do it. So anyway, um, we'll form our own rings, and then I ordered these, I'm not sure if you can see them, but it's like a wax twine leather cord. Is it leather or wax twine? I thought it was wax. Anyway, they're all natural colors, a bunch of different um, ones. Each one is like 33 yards, I think, of each color. And this will wrap all the way around the ring. It's not gonna be perfect circle either, so that's kind of more of that authentic vibe going on. Um, so this will wrap all the way around, and then I bought, these I can't open, so I'm not sure if you can see. They are moonstones. Some of them are moonstones, and, and then another color, I think, another type of stone. Natural stone beads, Amazonite stones. Anyway, these are really pretty. They're like purples, blues, greens, some like yellow and brownish colors. And I thought that since they were just really natural looking, the little pieces of strands that hang off of the Dreamcatcher at the bottom can have some beads on them. And then I also ordered um, different feathers. So these are different style feathers and they look like real bird feathers. Maybe they are real feathers, I don't know, but you can see, so they're kind of pretty. The light's hitting them. So I'm not sure how well you guys can see that on camera. But the boys can pick out, you know, whatever kinds of feathers that they want. These are really pretty. And I think I'll make one for mine and Dean's room too. So I should have enough for us to make about five of them. So each boy will have their own dream catcher that they have made. And there's a little tutorial online as far as how to weave like the in, inner part. Um, you can put beads and feathers on the inside too, or you can have them dangling off the bottom. But anyway, this stuff came in the mail, so I wanted to show you. This is gonna be the little craft that we're gonna do during the month of November as we learn about Native American history. Um, we're gonna make some food, we're gonna do all kinds of things like that. I did talk about our studies a little bit in more detail in last week's vlog, again, so you can go and check that out. And then another thing that came in the mail were flea collars for the cats and the dogs. Um, we, this is from Pets brand. I don't know, it had good ratings on Amazon and this one, I don't know the brand on it. It just says collar, it's for dogs. It had good ratings too on Amazon. I've never used flea collars on my animals before, but here's the deal. We have a cat who stays inside all the time, Clipsy, our white cat. She um, has not been fixed yet, so we don't let her outside because I don't want baby cats. And um, we had her inside, and we do have another cat, Oliver, our black cat, who comes in and out. Well, obviously, they have fleas because they're animals, and one goes in and out. And anyway, I noticed that we had some fleas in our house. Like, not a flea infestation, but like, I would see a flea jump where the cat was laying like if we moved the cat there would be a flea there and i was thinking oh my gosh we're gonna get fleas in the house because the cats have fleas and they are in the house um so i bought flea medicine i'm not a big fan of flea medicine because it is a chemical and a toxin and then the kids are petting and holding and cuddling the cats but i don't really know what other options there are because powders and it's, like cats are really sensitive to essential oils. It's not really great for them. Um, they can't have a lot of them around them because it'll cause nervous system issues. Um, dogs can handle more essential oils than cats can. Anyway, I have never had a ton of luck using natural like flea and tick repellents. I mean, spraying it on ourselves if we go outside, like I usually make like a, like a bug oil that we'll put on and it'll keep ticks from getting on us but that's hard to do for animals. And I used to do like um, like an herbal powder that I would put on Rosie's bed and I would put it all over her fur and that works a little bit, but you have to reapply it so often. It's just, for an indoor cat, it just, I don't know, it just was not working very well. Um, or at least when I did it in the past, it was a whole lot of work. Didn't work perfectly. Anyway, I decided to do flea medicine on the two cats and the dog and then we just don't touch them for like 24 um, to 48 hours when I put that on as far as like right there on their back so that it has time to absorb in and um, we're not gonna like touch the oil from the medicine that we put on. Now it's 
um, colder and I don't think that I need to put flea medicine on them as much because I believe that fleas kind of hibernate in the winter or they're not as active when it's cold out. Now, obviously our cat who lives inside is gonna have fleas on her all the time, but um, the other animals I thought, I don't even need to bother with the flea meds. I will give flea collars a try. I looked up online about just dealing with fleas on animals and basically a lot of pet owners were saying um, the flea medicine and the flea collars together were a really good fit. Now, these flea collars have um, essential oils in them that are safe for cats or at least maybe the dilution that's on here is safe for cats. So these are more natural so I'm not super worried about the boys touching that too much. Uh, obviously, I don't want undiluted essential oils on their skin because I'm not a big fan of that. Um, and I will tell them just to be really careful, like if they're holding a the cat and cuddling, that they don't rub the flea collar all over their face or whatever. Um, I think it's like the heat that helps the oils kind of seep into the cat's skin and the dog's skin. So yeah, um, these are very similar in the oils that are in them, but the cat's collars are a little bit different than the dog's. Anyway. All that to say, um, Monday has been a busy, productive day so far. Um, I wanted to share the stuff that I got off of Amazon with you for our um, our dream catchers and talk a little bit about the dog and the cat flea collars. And then I'm gonna go do some Aldi shopping and do some vlog edits um, for last week today. And that's pretty much all we're gonna get into for this Monday. Dean's gonna be working on some trim this evening and that's pretty much it so anyway I hope you guys are having a good Monday and I will talk to you later bye hey guys it's Thursday and I am just wrapping up work for the day and I realized that I did not check in with you guys yesterday um, it was rainy and gloomy all day yesterday it poured rain it was like a torrential downpour like all day long in fact our creek is so full it's muddy and it's kind of flooding up into our yard a little bit which normally happens when it rains a lot because all of the mountain streams just pour off into the creek that runs past our house and then that little creek runs right into the lake um, that's just like a little ways down from our house and um, yeah it's crazy so we've told the boys not to go outside by themselves today because the creeks high um, the ponds are all high and they're kind of just overflowing in our yard so Anyway, it was a nasty day yesterday. I just stayed inside and I worked my booty off on this new herbal course that I'm working on um, that will launch, actually, it'll open for pre-registration this weekend and then um, it'll be open for two weeks for people to sign up and then it'll be a three week course. It's gonna be fun. So make sure that you're subscribed to my newsletters. The link is in the description box below if you want more information on this specific course and just to keep up with growing up herbal, herbally things. So um, anyway, today I thought I would jump on here and share my two week meal plan with you guys. So this last Monday I went to Aldi's and I did two weeks worth of grocery shopping. So I love shopping at Aldi's because it saves me a lot of money and I feel like I can usually find healthy deals for lower prices at Aldi's. Um, now, this two-week meal plan is a little different than the way Dean and I and the boys have been eating here recently. Um, I have been trying to simplify my meal plans. I think I've talked about this on a past vlog. Um, just by like picking one cookbook and going through and choosing seasonal recipes that um, are tasty and easy to make and kind of quick, just to kind of simplify things. Well... Um, I have fallen off of the exercise bandwagon for a little while now. Um, I'm usually, I, I feel like I've been pretty good about keeping up with doing like my yoga or my bar exercises that I do, but since we bought this house last year, it has been just crazy. I feel like every evening um, we have house projects and then during the day we've been doing school during the day and then I'm trying to work and so there's just a lot of things that I have that are priorities in my life and I have put off um I put off working out a little bit more and Dean's still working out and going to the gym but anyway so I feel like I have been feeding us here recently a lot of high carb ish meals <laughs> um and so I feel like I have put on a little bit of weight um 
Dean has not really put on weight. He's actually lost weight, but again, he is going to the gym, but still, you know, we're eating higher carb meals, so it's easier to kind of keep um, extra weight on if you were eating a little bit better or balancing your macronutrients a little bit better then he would probably see faster results at the gym if that makes sense and I probably wouldn't feel like I needed to work out so much if I were eating a little bit healthier not not unhealthy like we haven't been eating unhealthy it's just I've not been I don't know I'm just trying to keep things simple and I've not really been watching our macronutrients that much. Not that I really pay all that much mind to like numbers and things like that because that overwhelms me and it makes, like eating is supposed to be enjoyable. We eat to be healthy, we eat to live, we eat to um, enjoy um, our company with friends and things like that. And so I don't wanna overthink food that much because then that takes all the fun out of it. Um, but anyway, so this last, or this, this two week meal plan that I have created for us is to kind of help us shed a little bit of extra fat that we have put on <laughs> before winter comes. Because in winter, I tend to, um, we eat more baked goods in the winter and we eat more sweets because the holidays are going on. So we eat a lot. Um, there's always a reason to celebrate and get together with friends in the colder months. Um, yeah, so I just feel like we kind of naturally put on a little bit more weight in the colder seasons. And plus we're not as active, we're not as outside, we're not doing as many things. Um, so before we get to that point, I want to try to do a little bit of a different kind of meal plan for the next two weeks and hopefully kind of trim up a little bit. I don't know if it'll work, I'll let you guys know. And I don't have like a ton of weight to lose or anything like that and Dean doesn't either. So it's just like, it's just kind of to like, um, I don't really know, like shed those last three or four pounds that you just kind of not paid that much attention to before you go into the full winter hibernation, lower energy time of the year. So anyway, I'm going to flip the camera around. I'm going to show you my planner where I keep all my meal plans in and I'm kind of going to explain what I'm doing and why we're doing it a little bit more. Okay, so here is the meal plan for this week. And as you can see, I have breakfast on here, but this is for the boys because I don't really eat breakfast all that much. I know that that isn't great according to some people. Other people like intermittent fasters, maybe they're okay with that. So everybody has their own idea of what works for them. And I kind of just change things up according to our needs and what I'm feeling like at the moment. But this is for the boys, that's their breakfast. Monday, I did not plan anything because I went out to Aldi's, so I wasn't here to make dinner. Um, okay, so this section of the meal plan is um, mostly like a high protein, low fat, low carb meals. So what I've done is I have followed Trim Healthy Mama for a couple of years now. And I have tried a lot of their recipes in their cookbooks and they're really good, they're really tasty, they're simple, they're easy to make. Um, but I have not really followed the program all that much um, to help you kind of trim up and lose weight if you need to or maintain weight or whatever. Um, but I thought that it would be nice to kind of do like a little reset. Um, these meals are designed to be protein only and you're not giving yourself carb or fat fuel sources and then that triggers your body to pull from its own fuel storage, which is your fat, right? Um, it will pull from your muscle if you're not eating protein. That's why all of these meals are higher protein. So because we're not getting um, a lot of carbs or fat this week, our bodies will use our own fat stores for energy. Does that make sense? Um, if you are curious about this, the Trim Healthy Mama book is really helpful on this. And it's, um, in my mind, a very balanced way of eating if you struggle with weight. I just wanna try this for two or three weeks and just see if it makes a big difference in our lives. Um, yeah, I don't think it's something that I'm gonna do all the time though. Okay, so let me take you guys a little bit closer. On Tuesday, we did um, this Asian stir fry meal. It was mostly veggies and it used cauliflower rice and it had chicken in it, it was really yummy. Then that evening we had Mexican chicken with more cauliflower rice and zucchini and onion for dinner. That meal was, it was okay. Um, on Wednesday, we had quiche for lunch. Now this was crustless 
and it used egg whites instead of whole eggs because again, we're trying to do high protein, no fat, no carb, and it was delicious. The boys loved it and they asked me to make it again and Dean really liked that too. Now for dinner, we had Popeye's Power Soup. We usually always have soups on Wednesday. If you've watched any of my Aldi's videos, you'll know that, um, except we did not have sourdough bread with it this time. Um, at least for this week. If we were doing like a carb meal, we could do that, and I'll explain that next week. But this Popeye's Power Soup is mostly spinach, and everybody enjoyed that a lot. Well, one of my kids, who normally doesn't like spinach, liked it, um, and Dean and I enjoyed that a lot. It was really good. Then for uh, lunch today, we did this creamy chicken recipe. It had cabbage and chicken, and I think they allow you to use the Laughing Cow cheese, which is like a lower fat cheese in this recipe and it was so good. Tonight I'm getting ready to make some egg roll bowls with some cauliflower rice, so I hope that that turns out well. <laughs> On Friday for lunch, I'm gonna make some bang bang chicken and then we're gonna do tilapia veracruz with cauliflower rice and salad or some sort of veggies for dinner. Um, I, we have had this before. Back when I was just making the recipes and not really following Trim Healthy Mama, that is a delicious fish recipe. Um, and then on Saturday, we're gonna do herb chicken and trudels. I have a bunch of zucchini that I'm gonna turn into noodles and we'll have that for lunch and we'll have an enchilada casserole for dinner. Now, when you're on what Trim Healthy Mama calls fuel pull meals, that's what this is, a fuel pull cycle. So all we're eating are these high protein, low fat, low carb meals. So we pull from our own fuel sources. The um, Anytime you need like a tortilla shell, they have a recipe called Wonder Wraps that we will use, we will make and use, so like egg whites and some other things. So anyway, I'm curious to see what I think about that recipe and making those wraps. I don't know, never made them before, so I'll let you guys know. So anyway, this is our fuel pull week. This is really to like reset our metabolism and kind of tell our body to use its own fuel sources because we're not giving it anything other than protein to maintain muscle. Now, this week is going to be a mixture, I think Trim Healthy Mama calls it a fuel cycle. So what we're doing is, you can see I've got some S's written in the corners here, E's over here, and FP's on these two days. Um, so what this is, is the S's are satisfying meals. These are your higher fat meals and very low carb meals. And your protein is always balanced in all these meals. And then over here, we're gonna have two days worth of E meals. These are energizing meals. And these are the heavier on carbs and low on fat. So we're gonna give ourselves lots of fat here and barely any carbs. Then we're gonna switch and give ourselves lots of carbs and barely any fat. And then here we're gonna switch again and do protein only, no fat, no carbs. So what we're doing is we're kind of like tricking our metabolism by making it have to shift around and burn fat and then burn carbs and then burn our own fuel again because we're not giving it any. So it kind of keeps your metabolism, I guess, guessing and using fuel better i'm not sure exactly so again we're gonna see but if you're curious get the book and read it it's really good um for breakfast this week the boys are gonna have their peanut butter granola cereal and then for lunch we are going to do a southwestern salad and it's got like some sort of avocado dressing again these are higher fat meals we're gonna do a salmon siesta for dinner on tuesday we'll do this soothe your soup or soothe your soul soup and shepherd's pie. Now, because this is higher fat, this shepherd's pie will be low carb, which means no white potatoes. Now, normally I use white potatoes when I make a shepherd's pie, but this time I'm going to use cauliflower and make cauliflower mashed potatoes. So I'll see how that goes. I'm not sure. <laughs> we like cauliflower mashed potatoes, but Dean likes white mashed potatoes, and so do I, I guess, better than the cauliflower ones, but we'll see how that goes. All right, on Wednesday, we're switching to our carb meals. So for lunch, we'll do sweet potatoes, like loaded sweet potatoes with tuna on the side and lentil soup. And I think with this lentil soup, we can have some sprouted grain bread. I think that's okay. Cause I'm not really into like gluten-free breads and things like that, I just don't think they taste good. So I'd rather do like sprouted or some sourdough, but just not as much as we normally do on that day. Anyway, on Thursday for lunch, we're doing fish tacos and we'll use those Wonder Wraps again. Um, and then we're doing some cowboy grub bowls, which is kind of like a stew for dinner. Um, and that is supposed to be really yummy. I've never had that before. Then on Friday and Saturday, we're switching back to these fuel pool meals. We'll do chicken fajita soup, which is yummy. I've made that before and the boys all love that. And then we'll do these mini meat loaves, which have turkey meat in them since that's like a low fat meat. And we'll do veggies on the side. For um, 
Saturday's lunch, I have veggie stir fry and cauliflower rice, and then I've got chicken zucchini boats. So basically that's like stuffed zucchini with chicken in it. Um, so we'll do that for Friday and Saturday. Now, if you'll notice, Sundays are blank for both weeks. That's because if you've watched my videos, um, especially my Aldi shopping hauls, where I talk about my meal plans a little bit more, Sundays are a family kitchen with Dean's family, so I'm not planning anything on there. We're gonna eat whatever on Sundays to give our bodies like a break from this type of, um, I guess, switching up fuel sources. We're just gonna eat whatever on these days. Now, the last thing that I wanted to point out is what we're doing with the boys on this. So obviously the boys are young, they're growing, their metabolisms are burning fast and they burn up all of the fuel that they put in their bodies. They don't really have any issue with storing fat. If you pay attention to my boys, they're all quite skinny. So they need more um, fuel in their body than just these protein meals alone. So this week they are adding like carbs and fats to their meals. They can add cheese and butter and sour cream to these if they want. They can eat them alongside of any breads or crackers or whatever. Um, obviously we're still trying to keep things healthy, but that helps them to have a very balanced macronutrients in their meals. And then this week, when we switch over to do the fuel cycles where we're switching up the macros, then when we have our fat meals, they'll add in some carbs. And when we do our carb meals, they'll add in more fats than Dean and I do. And then again, on these fuel pull meals, they will add in both fats and carbs, whereas Dean and I will not. Okay, so we are going to give this a try for the next two weeks. And I will do my best to let you guys know in next week's vlog how it went for us. Um, I feel like th so far this week on this fuel pull week, which I feel like has got to be the hardest because... It's kind of difficult not to eat with fat and carbs in your meals. Um, anyway, the rest, I'm so thankful for these cookbooks and all the recipes in them because they do taste good um, and it makes it easier for me not to have to figure out how to cook protein only with no fat and no carb. Um, anyway, this week has been okay. Um, we have been having to, I guess, be more self-disciplined and control ourselves to not just go and eat certain things that we're used to grabbing and eating, like snacks that maybe aren't that healthy for us, but we've just kind of fallen in this little slump of eating them. Um, snacking late at night or just doing things like that. You have to be careful. Like sometimes I like to have fruit late at night, but that can be high in carbs. So you have to be careful with that. Anyway, I feel like this is a really good reset for us to kind of put us back in this mode and mindset of what um, I guess being mindful of macronutrients, being mindful of what your metabolism is like now and um, just kind of a little reset on how you eat, like noticing the areas that you've kind of like gotten really lax on or I don't know. So anyway, next uh, week's vlog, I'll try to remember to um, let you know how it's going again. And then once these two weeks are totally over, I'll let you know if we lost any weight. Hopefully, hopefully we shed some fat. <laughs> hopefully I shed some fat. <laughs> And um, yeah, I don't know, maybe this will be like a sort of like a little um, thing that we do a few times a year just to kind of like kick our metabolisms into high gear again. Anyway, so I hope you guys are having a good Thursday and I will talk to you tomorrow, bye.
you get your friend? Your friend in his box. Three cards. Three cards. Three writing books. Three a calculator. Books, a calculator. Um, one of those bouncy balloons. Punch balloons. Glossies. Glossies. And uh, I also got a writing tablet. I have to put more things, but Did I you get him pens this. and pencils? Oh, that's like a little light with yeah. batteries. It's really bad. Uh-huh. All right. And... Raya, what did you get? Book! What did you get your I only little put boy? I the calculator You got him Legos. Ha, huh, this is yours, you are. Uh, I already I have a calculator. the same calculator. stuff Raya had. Who doesn't have a calculator? I don't have a calculator. I have... Zaya, your box is so full. You're gonna have to open that up and. Oh, I see. Never mind. I'm gonna have to pack. Oh yeah, you got a bunch of stuff. There. Pencils. I can't. I'm not good at talking. I'm not good at. Uh, I don't have a toothbrush. Mm -hmm. Okay, so here are the boys' four boxes. We have labeled them for their age and gender. And we scanned these QR codes and I wrote each boy's name to the, um, on their box so we know that this is the QR code for Isaiah's box, Judah's, Uriah's, and Ezra's. And then we went and paid for the shipping of our boxes online and we'll be able to track where this box goes. And um, I'm not sure that we'll see what child gets it, but um, we'll be able to see what country and I think what city it goes to. So yeah, we'll take these to church tomorrow. And then everybody else's boxes will all be gathered together too, and the church will take them over to um, the Samaritan's Purse drop-off in Boone, North Carolina, and they'll get shipped out. Hey guys, so it's Sunday night, and I'm just jumping on here to wrap up this past week's vlog. I appreciate you guys stopping by and watching. I hope you enjoy getting a glimpse into our week, and I will catch you in the next video. Take care. Bye.